Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. A little market report here of today's activities. We saw uh, silver and gold take a little bit of a hit in the markets. In fact, we'll take a look at the prices right now. We see uh, gold is down 0.22%, uh, $3.20, about fourteen seventy-five ten. Silver is down 1.9%. Down 32 cents. It's actually the biggest loser of the day of the precious metals, but that is to be expected because of the volatility that silver has been uh, um, manifesting as of late. Platinum is down $15, just behind silver as a percentage rate. $898 it is now below the $900 level. Palladium is the clear winner of all the metals. Uh, it is up actually 0.71%, up $13 to 1876 $1,876. Rhodium is flat at $5,800, but boy, it has been the metal that has performed, performed the best of the PGMs and obviously as well gold and silver. Fascinating indeed. We'll tap into some reasons why the markets are doing what they're doing today. Um, and that is because of, of uh, well, because of trade. With the, and another up in the 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 teeter teetering of of the trade talks and and the attitudes towards it has been kind of crazy. It's almost been like a roller coaster ride in terms of what's going on with trade. Um, it's notched a four week high after gold had reached a notch of a four week high of early going going and rallying the U.S. stock market today prompted some selling pressures in the in the safe haven metals. It's good news for the gold and silver bulls this week as the both markets have seen their near term price downtrends eliminated or at least temporarily. February gold futures were last down four dollars and fifty cents an ounce at fourteen seventy nine ninety. March COMEX silver prices were last down about 30 cents at $16.94 an ounce. Risk appetite returned to the marketplace as midweek on fresh news reports that the U.S. and China are close to a trade deal. In fact, some are saying if, if we could see something by the 15th of December. It's crazy because amid a lack of other major new de news developments, trader and investor focus remains on the rhetoric coming from the U.S. and China regarding the trade negotiations. And they were talking about there may not be a deal until late next year, perhaps after the election is what Trump was saying. And I'm wondering if it's doing that just to tweak uh, tweak the media and to tweak uh, China represent representatives to come to the table and try to get something done. For whatever reason, the marketplace at midweek is more upbeat than Tuesday on the chances for a trade agreement soon between the world's two largest economies. It's hard to imagine the two sides reaching a substantive a substantive trade deal soon, given comments coming from both sides. And the U.S. House of Representatives passed a, a bill late Tuesday requiring U.S. punishment of Chinese officials involved in the repression of, of uh, Uyghur Muslims in the country. Uh, China quickly vowed retaliation. Not only that, but Trump has also condemned the uh, treatment of the uh, protesters in Hong Kong. This morning's ADP National Employment Report for November came in at just 67,000 jobs, which is a big miss to the downside for market expectations for a rise of 150,000. The gold market briefly erased modest overnight losses on the news. The U.S. economic data point of the week is Friday's unemployment employment situation report from the Labor Department. The key non-farm payroll number is expected to come in at around 185,000 jobs. The key outside markets today see the U.S. dollar index weaker again today after hitting a four-week low. The greenback bulls have faded recently. Meantime, in meantime, NYMEX crude oil prices are sharply higher and trading around $58.50 a barrel. Technically, February gold bulls and bears are on the level overall near-term technical playing field. The three-month-old downtrend on the daily bar chart has this week been at least temporarily negated. Gold bulls next upside near-term br price breakout is to produce a close above solid technical resistance at $1,500. Bears next term downside price breakout objectives of pushing prices below solid technical support at the November low of $1,453.10. First resistance is seen at today's high of $1489.90 and then at 
First at poor to seen at 14.75, and then at Tuesday's low of 14.65, which gives a Wyckoff's market rating of 5.0. March silver futures pr prices scored a bearish outish outside day down on the on the daily bar chart. The silver bears have the slight overall near-term technical advantage. However, a price downtrend on the daily chart has this week been negated. Silver bulls. Next upside price breakout objective is closing prices above solid technical resistance at $17.50 an ounce. The next downside price breakout objective is for the bears at closing prices below solid support at $16.50. And that's right in the middle was my was where I was at at $17. And appears that the floor is crumbling. Um, first resistance is seen at $17.25 and then today's high at $17.41. Next support is seen at the November low of 1676 and then at 1650. It gives a white cost market rating of 4.5. You know, that fit, that $17 psychological level that I kind of adhered to for the past couple of months here, it's crumbling away. Uh, and it is interesting to see that it's now well below here 1692 for the ask price. It's not that far below $17 level, but it is below. And I think with these unemployment numbers, We'll see what the job numbers come out with Friday to see what the precious metal prices do. But typically for December, we can expect probably the prices to be relatively flat. Um, and, uh, and in terms of trade, is, where trade is, um, and the talks thereof, you know, I don't believe anything until it's actually signed. The rhetoric from both sides has been over the top. And I think it's just to, uh, they're basically calling bluffs calling each other's bluffs and bluffing and um and i believe that until we actually see something signed for phase one will we see really a whole any much act and, we, and well we shouldn't see any reaction i believe in the markets but that's just it the markets in many cases are not rational which is why technical analysis which is what i kind of went over a little bit is somewhat of a moot point and uh, we can uh, we can only kind of just uh wait it out and see what happens um and uh, the markets should only react if there is impending news or imminent news of the signing of a deal uh, or an agreement thereof. I also think the markets will react positively, uh, and I'm talking about the stock market and the, you know, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 and the like, and, 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 and that will react positively. Gold and silver uh, and platinum and maybe even palladium will react negatively to um, a uh, USMCA uh, deal that has been passed and approved by Congress and signed by the president. It's already been agreed upon from uh, representatives in Mexico and Canada and the US, but it has yet to be approved by Congress. And uh, so now obviously there's political reasons, purely political reasons why it's not being done. Right now they're in the middle of impeachment and I believe they will impeach the president and how that will affect the markets. My guess is it's probably not by much. Um, now, psychologically, there will be uh, um, some reaction, but uh, that might be a topic for another video, but um, we'll see how it plays out. But this is the news of the day where the precious metal prices are, and it's interesting to kind of watch and keep an eye on. But my guess is throughout the December, we should see the prices relatively stable with movements here and there, uh, but uh, probably not a whole lot to the upside is my guess. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching. Remember, I do post videos daily, and I'd like to encourage you to please rate, and yes, please share this video as well. Comment and subscribe. <laughs>